So this is a video guide to the Stafford Gambit for beginners or lower level intermediate players. Right, it's my strong belief that the main focus uh, on on old sort of chess players, really under sort of two thousand, should really predominantly focus in on tactics, and more so the lower down you go. But you still have to open the game, right? You still have to like deal with with this particular openings, and some openings are annoying. So in this video, I'm going to give you a no nonsense approach how to deal with the Stafford Gambit as white. Right, I'm actually going to give you two two lines. I'm going to give you one where you can watch this video in two minutes and that's it. And another one that's got a bit more to it, a bit, bit longer, a bit more analysis. So let's crack on. So the Stafford arises after the following moves. E4, E5, 9F3 and then 9F6. And if white takes, then the Stafford arises by knight C6, right, challenging the knight. And accepting the gambit results in that really aggressive uh, action for black in, in most cases and there's lots of traps and lots of stuff to deal with right here's just a quick example of the sort of stuff that black wants okay so after protecting the knight early development of pieces something like this for example looks perfectly natural but this is just losing right after takes taking the queen for example bishop takes king moves checkmate so black's looking for this sorts of stuff right so here's the thing, here's, here's the theory, let's, let's go back to the position. So after e4, e5, 9f3, 9f6, and if you take the pawn, black plays this move, right? And he wants the following uh, action that we've just seen in the example. So my advice here is uh, do not take the knight, okay? What black wants is for you to go into this line, right? Black wants the gambit on the board, okay? And for me, if the player wants that so much then I always used to try and find a way to not play that, right? And then we've already won the sort of psychological battle because chess is a, a psychological battle as well. And if you're winning the psychological battle and, you know, they're wanting to play that and you're denying that, I think that's the best way forward. So this is the first recommendation. You can watch this in 30 seconds and then you can go watch something else. Uh, and then if you want to say, say the other the other analysis, you can, you can stick around. Okay, you're supposed to do it the other way, but I can't be bothered with all that. Anyway, so... What I would recommend, if you're a beginner player and you want to avoid all of this business, right, and this is going to feel a bit of a cop-out, but it's simply, in this position, don't take the pawn. All right? You know, okay, that's a bit of a cop-out. That's like saying, well, just play D4, you know, just play D4 then, you know, and it, it avoids the line. But seriously, if you're just a beginner player, you want to avoid all of that, in this position, just play Knight C3. Okay, and it's not rocket science, you know, you just bring the knights into the into the game, you'll end up playing a, a three, four knights game or a three knights game, and you'll just play simple chess, and uh, there'll be no problems in the position. Okay, so okay, so if you're still with me, the move that I'm going to suggest, we at least explore the idea of here in this position, is not taking the knight, but actually d4. Right, d is not really on the radar uh, for the black player. Like, just have a look at the, the following stats, for example. Going back to the this move, the main move, like the main line move, 6.9 million games in the, in the LHS database, the play database, right? But after uh, D4, we go down to like 194,000 for the, for the top per percentage. So it, it's, not on the, it's not really on the radar. And I think why generally speaking here, it's going to have a really good game with potential to sort of trap black back a little bit in some of the lines, right? In fact, there's only the queen e7 move, which seems to give uh, black a little bit of better play, but I'm going to explore that in a little bit because after moving into knight c3, I think black's, uh, white's absolutely fine, right? So I actually got my calculator out here in this position, not in this position, in this one. Uh, yeah, in this one, that's right. And worked out uh, you know worked out the percentages uh, you know we have to remember that to do percentages again so always forget that <laughs> right and uh, an actual chance of black playing queen e7 anyway in this position is three percent okay three percent 97 percent of players in this position won't play black's plus move so i think that's certainly worth taking on now i've said in previous videos i don't believe in chess where we play a move hoping that your opponent doesn't play another move, because I think that's bad chess. It's like, I'm going to play a bad move, hope you don't play a bad move, or hope you do play a bad move, so I can take advantage of that. But I don't think d4 is a bad move. I think it's an absolutely fine move anyway. So I don't think there's nothing to risk, really. I think there's only things to actually gain from it. After d4, black has got four moves. We're just going to look at four moves from this position. Right, the main move, knight takes on e5, which is absolutely fine for white. 
and you'll get that in around 48% of, of cases, 50% or so. Uh, the other move, knight takes e4, which is actually a blunder for black, and you're going to win a piece. All right? And then the next two moves, d6, which is absolutely fine for white, and then queen e7, which after knight c3 is also absolutely fine for white, in my opinion. So let's look at the first one. I'm going to go through it in logical order, so the most likely to the least likely. Okay, let's go. After d4, and the first most likely outcome is knight takes knight, what we're going to do is take the knight back, and then we're going to play generally play a queen e2 in this position. So after knight takes, queen e2, I found was the, the most sensible move. And what queen e2 does is obviously attacks the knight. Right, it doesn't give time for white to sort of try and post a d5. I know we can play on pass on, but it's, it's in some instances we might not want to. Uh, in this position, I find the queen e2 and a castle queen side plan is the simplest and, and it's also the best uh, setup. So let's look at a possible continuation. So after queen e2, if black does try and hold the knight in place, we're just going to take on Poisson and pick up a free piece, which should be very welcome. Uh, so, most likely, black will come to c5. And in this case, we're not going to bang our queen around the board like a maniac. What we're going to do is develop sensibly. We're going to play knight c3. And then, you know, if black develops sensibly, the bishops are very restricted here, obviously, because of the knight and, and this pawn's doing a good job. Uh, then we're going to do... Just bring the pieces out. I would go bishop e3. Right. Keeping an eye on the knight. But not necessarily for that purpose. The idea is we're going to castle quickly. Yeah, that's the idea. So after castles, castle queenside. We've just got a, a very easy sort of game. With the pieces into the game. And, you know, the game goes on. Okay, so the next scenario. Uh, if instead of knight taking knight on e5. Black plays knight takes e4. And this is the perfect scenario because this is an absolute disaster for black in all lines, right? And our next move is the same move as before. We're going to play queen e2, okay? And I'll show you an example of what can happen here. I think I think black's basically lost in this position because after, for example, d5, then we just have taking the knight and then f3, right? And then black can sort of delay that with the check, but after g3, queen moves away, we pick up the piece. And yeah, you can argue... And maybe that, you know, there's some compensation because it's going to take a while for white to sort of get settled here. But it's a piece at the end of the day. And you have to say it takes. You can either bring the knight out or the bishop out and then just look to trade off pieces. You're a piece up in the position. OK, so some of the things that black can do in the initial position are no better either. So, for example, knight takes knight. Obviously, it's no good because you just pick up the free piece. Let's have a look at some of the other options. Knight f6 is uh, is really, really fun because this obviously just leads to us winning the queen straight away, which is fantastic because we have the check. The check has to be blocked and then we pick up the queen. So that's absolutely fine. f5, same thing really as before. We take the knight and after the knight's traded, we just play f3 in the position. And, uh, you know, same thing maybe. Check, push. It comes back, and then we pick the knight up. So it's a similar idea. Okay, so just two more situations left, but they, these are fairly short, the next ones that are coming up. And don't worry, I will quickly run through all the variations at the end of the video. So the next one, it's absolutely nothing to be concerned about. D6, the idea behind D6 is we just take, all right, and then we just play knight C3. And I, I think White's got a really fine game here. Nice central pawns. Potentially, this pawn could be weak, or not always, but I think... This is a very simple setup for uh, White to play. Castle King side in this position, Bishop out somewhere. Game goes on. Really nice looking position, not to worry about that. Uh, so, before I mention the Queen E7 line, then uh, a lot of people, beginners, do like to check. So, I think I better just throw this one in. And if checks, then we just play C3, push his back, take the Knight again, similar idea, and then just develop pieces. Similar sort of setup. Castle, you know, get, get your pieces out, maybe Bishop first in this instance. Uh, but whatever, really. And then, you know, the game goes on in that position. But another absolutely fine game for white. Okay, so let's look at the queen e7 setup. Okay, so the last thing we need to look at then, apart from that quick summary at the end, is the queen e7 line. And this is absolutely nothing to be scared of at all. So the setup here is just to give the pawn back. I don't try and hold on to anything and play knight c3. Right, black still wants that aggressive gambit game, right? But we're not going to do that. We're going to hand the pawn back. 
and we're going to have a better position anyway, or at least equal. You're very, very, very least equal. So after this move, knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes, you've got two options here, right? You can play a very sort of steady, solid bishop d3, right? And that's absolutely fine. It's sort of an even sort of game from there. Or if you're feeling a bit more adventurous and you've had your wheat to bix that morning or whatever cereal uh, floats you bought, then you can play f4 in this position. Right, and this is more aggressive, but it brings with it more risks because it, it's going to take a while for white to get safe. But it's perfectly safe if you can play and handle these sorts of positions. So after things like queen a5, then bishop d3 maybe, you know, you're sort of looking at, I would probably hear castle king side at some point and then took the king, on, king onto h1, right, you know, after bishop comes to c5, uh, b4, for example, you just underpin like that. And then this is a more aggressive game for white. Uh, so the, the choice is yours, really, uh, from this point of view. Okay, so I'll just give a quick summary, uh, and then then uh, you know, you're free to go. <laughs> okay, so we got e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, and then the uh, you know the cop out version is just knight c3. Game goes on. Uh, the other version they want to play the d4 idea. You take the pawn, and after knight uh, c6, we go d4, d4. After d4, if the knight takes. Pawn takes, knight takes, then we go queen e2. Queen e2 is the idea, okay? Uh, and then, you know, knight moves away and then we develop. We just develop into the position and uh, go queen side eventually. Okay, so that's the knight takes version, uh, which will be the first option that we'll see. And then slightly less than that, like 43% of the time, absolutely fantastic because black's going to take the e4 pawn and then we're just going to go queen e2. And that's going to win the piece in, in the lines, uh, as we've seen. The next move we might see is d6. d6 is not a problem. We just take. And then we play knight c3 and develop normally. You know, bishop somewhere, castles, bishop out, so on and so forth. Very easy to play that sort of position. Uh, the next one was, well, just throwing in the check. It's not an issue either. I keep forgetting to put d4 on. Uh, and we just play c3, push it back, and then the game goes on likewise. So the last thing we looked at was queen e7. Not a problem, because we're just going to give the pawn back. Knight c3, takes, takes. And then we've got a solid eddy version. We're just going to play bishop d3, or we're going to risk and play a bit more aggressive than f4. That's totally up to you. Okay, so that's this video then. Hope you enjoyed it. I probably am going to be filming less videos from now on because I'm getting my book coming out soon. Absolutely fantastic. Two and a half years in, in, in the writing. And I'm going to be a bit busy with book two, editing book two. So I'll still do uh, two two chess videos a week maybe, but that's probably all, all I can manage from, from this point onwards. We'll see how things go anyway. If the book sales absolutely flops, then, you know, maybe I'll just keep doing this. All right, so thanks for watching. Goodbye.